Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm playing around with a spark of our inspiration. So what's a spark of our inspiration? It is a free downloadable that comes with my newsletter. There's a new one each week. And with these, I can do any number of things. I can cut them up, I can collage with them, or I can use them in an art journal page. And actually in this, I see the image of a woman and I'm gonna share with you in this video how I can make that woman stand out a little bit more and then turn her into an art, <laughs> art journal page. When I saw the spark, I saw this woman in the top corner kind of just waking up. She's got a little bit of bedhead going on and just peeking out over the covers. So I'm gonna bring her out a little bit by tracing around the features that I see, that big smile that's on her face to greet the day, gonna outline that bed head that she's got going on. That way she's gonna pop and stand out a little bit more. Now the pencil that I'm using is called a Stabilo pencil. And the reason I chose that is it's, it's one of my go-to pencils for when I wanna draw on something because it will draw on just about anything. It also reacts to water, so I'm gonna be careful not to get it wet because it'll smear or run if I get it wet. Now, can you use any kind of pencil or a pen or a marker or anything at all to do this? Absolutely. This just happens to be what I had around, so that's what I grabbed. One of the things I do like about using a pencil is it lets me do some lighter lines, and if I want them darker, I can push harder, and then I'll end up with darker lines. Now, I wanna make part of this disappear, and that's the magic of white paint. So a thick white paint called Heavy Body, which is very opaque, will allow me to cover up a lot of this. And I'm just gonna paint around the part that isn't her big, wonderful, comfy cover or her hair. Now the paper that I used to print the spark on is plain old cheap copy paper. This time I did run it through my laser printer. I've also done these through inkjet printers. Both of them work. Now if you're gonna use an inkjet print, sometimes the ink on it will run. And if you wanna seal that, you can put a thin layer of um, gel medium on top of it and that'll keep it from smearing. If you wanna see exactly how I do that, I've got a video with it over in the free workshop called Permission to Play. And you might have noticed I'm not really staying inside the lines too terribly well, and that's because I'm gonna cut this out. So I'm not gonna worry about being very precise there. And the only reason why I'm being kind of precise here is I don't wanna pick up any of that black Stabilo pencil, and I want my white to stay nice and bright white. Now sometimes I'll rip these instead of cutting them with scissors, but today I feel like I want those straight lines, so I'm actually gonna cut with scissors. Now which way is the best way to do it with sparks? Whichever one you wanna do it, that's always the best way to do it. One thing that I will say is if you let the paint completely dry before cutting it out, you don't have to cut nearly as carefully or handle this nearly as carefully. Perhaps I should have been more patient and waited for it to dry, but I'm just not having a patient kind of day. So I'm just gonna work around that wet paint carefully. So once I've found the character or image inside the spark, what can I do with it then? Well, right like this, I could glue it right onto a card blank and I've got a quick and easy card to send somebody. But I'm feeling more like a cardboard journal kind of day rather than a card, so I'm gonna build a quick art journal page with this. Now, this isn't the only way that you can use these to make pages in an art journal. I've got several other ways that I'm sharing also in that Permission to Play workshop, as well as showing you how to turn these cardboard pages into bound journals. Now that orange piece of painted book text that I've got here that I'm adhering with some gel medium in a very loose and sloppy kind of way, why is the backside painted purple? I have no idea, but apparently I painted both sides of it, but I'm really feeling like the orange side, so that's the side that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna stick it down, and of course there are always going to be little bits and edges where I never have enough glue. If I'm really super careful, I still have those edges that aren't completely glued down, so I've learned I'm just not gonna be that careful and then go back and check my edges to make sure that they're all flat. Well, now I'm gonna bring in the image, the one of the woman peeking out from the covers, and yep, the white paint's still wet on there, so I'm just gonna be careful about that and try and handle it only in the dry areas. So when I put my gel medium on this time, I'm gonna put it right onto the page. Again, you can see that precision with which I'm applying it, because again, I always know the edges are always gonna have a little bit not there, so then I just go back and help those edges out. Now, why am I not worried about little bits of glue going past the image? That's because it's gel medium and it's gonna dry clear. Also why I like the matte gel medium, and this will just disappear into the page, nobody will even notice it, and I don't have to spend the energy trying to be precise. I wanna put a title on here, 
And the word that I want to use is wonder, because to me, she is greeting the day with just a big smile because she doesn't know what wonders are waiting for her throughout it. So I'm going to take the word wonder using a stencil. This is one that I created for over at Stencil Girl Products called Now is the Time. I'm going to take a very fancy cosmetic sponge from the drugstore in some black acrylic paint, and I'm just going to pounce right on there to get the word wonder on it. Now you might notice that I am pouncing in an up and down motion. The crisper or clearer I want the image, the more I want to go in an up and down motion so paint doesn't run underneath it. It also helps to have a thick paint to do this if you have a problem with words, or not words, with paint running under the words or your stencil images. And remember, if you want to try playing around with this exact same spark that I'm using, there's a link down below where you can get it sent right to your inbox. Well, now I'm going to add a little bit of journaling, capturing the story that I think goes with her, what's popping into my mind, and you're not going to be able to read this. I'm not able to read it, because what I'm going to do is some scribble journaling. I'm going to use whatever pencils around me, and it happens to be that Stabilo pencil that I used from earlier. Absolutely could use any kind of pen, pencil, whatever works for you. I just like to grab the stuff that's closest by me so I can spend more time playing and less time looking for things. So now you know one of the ways that I use Sparks of Artspiration to make things like art journal pages. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. And yes, of course, I would love it if you downloaded the Spark and started playing yourself. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.